school. Thanks. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Morton Ann Gernsbacher. I'm a Vilas professor and the Sir Frederick Bartlett professor in the psychology department. And I want to begin today by situating why it is that I use synchronous text-based chat in my classes. But first I need to tell you that over a decade ago I volitionally moved all of my UW-Madison courses onto the internet and I teach only online. And I do that by choice. So why did I do that? Well, I wanted to harness fundamental principles of learning. For example, internet-based education can optimize performance. So psychological science, as well as personal observation, identifies differences among us in terms of our optimal time of the day. Our cognitive processes peak at our optimal times, and they flounder at our non-optimal times. And empirical research documents that every cognitive process, memory, attention, language comprehension, even intelligence testing and attitude formation operates at peak during our optimal time of the day. And the older we get, the earlier in the day we find our peak time for performance, which might explain why, in at least my department, many instructors like to teach at 8 a.m. However, at 8 a.m., most traditional age undergraduate students have barely gone through two full stages of REM sleep. <laughs> And even if students have tried to get a good night of sleep, their biology dictates against morning hours bringing their optimal performance. Indeed, by puberty, students' optimal time of the day has already shifted beyond the traditional school day to evening. So the beauty of internet-based higher education is that learners can engage with the material in the course at whatever time of the day or night works best for them. So for example, in my internet-based courses, all of the assignments are due at 11.59 p.m. But students can complete the assignments hours or days before they're due, and they can do so at any time. And students can also engage with the material around the clock, 24-7. So in this way, internet-based education can optimize performance by allowing students to capitalize on their optimal time of the day. Internet-based education can also deepen memory. Psychological science documents the value of deeper levels of processing, and information that's processed to a deeper level is remembered better, and more deeply processed information is also more tightly connected to previously learned and subsequently learned concepts. And internet-based learning can deepen levels of processing for one simple reason, to allay concerns about cheating assignments and exams have to assess deeper levels of processing. Because one of the primary concerns that a lot of instructors have about internet-based teaching is that they worry that students will cheat. And by cheat they mean usually look up the answers. But if the answers to a question or the solution to a problem is just a click away, chances are the assignment or the exam item, be it internet-based or in person, isn't assessing a very deep level of processing. And we probably shouldn't be assessing such superficial knowledge in any of our higher education courses. Internet-based education can also promote critical thinking. A few years ago, a group of psychology students at the University of Cincinnati refused to spend $218 to purchase the introductory psychology textbook for their course. And instead, they gathered all the information they needed for their course using only the internet. So how did the students fare? They were at the top of the class. How could that be? Don't we all know that the internet is full of cat videos and yesterday llamas running around and people arguing about the color of a blue dress, but it was really blue, it's not white, it's really blue. Well, that's true. But the internet is also full of thousands of videos that explain how to compute a t-test, which is a basic statistical tool in my field of study. The, there are videos available on YouTube and Khan Academy and TED and other internet-based video sharing sites that provide a vibrant component of many curricula and as has been empirically documented. And moreover, as research published in the prestigious journal Nature demonstrated a few years ago, information available on the internet-based Wikipedia is just as accurate as information available in the resource I had growing up in the 50s 
which was the print-based Encyclopedia Britannica. This is not to say that either Wikipedia or Encyclopedia Britannica is 100% accurate, because they're not. But Wikipedia is no less accurate than a traditional print-based encyclopedia. And the accuracy of the information on the internet, although commonly underestimated, is one factor that led to the University of Cincinnati students' success with substituting internet-based information for a standard textbook. The other factor was that it was the process of gathering information from the internet that evoked more critical thinking than simply reading a textbook. Active learning, as you know, uh, which here at Wisconsin we consider winnowing and sifting intellectual wheat from chaff, facilitates learning. And the internet magnifies the opportunities for winnowing and sifting. Lastly, internet-based education can lead to better mastery because a core principle of learning is that shorter, more frequent episodes of practice leads to better mastery than longer, less frequent episodes. Acquiring skills through more frequent practice is considered distributed learning, whereas acquiring skills through less frequent practice is considered mass learning, and distributed learning almost always trumps mass learning regardless of the content of the information you're learning. Distributed learning's advantage over mass learning has been demonstrated for students of all ages, acquiring mastery in a wide range of courses, and internet-based learning enables more frequent engagement with the material than traditional face-to-face -face higher education. For example, in my department, most of our face-to-face -face undergraduate classes meet only twice a week. And many seminar-style courses, including graduate-level courses, meet only <laughs> once a week. While we instructors like, would like to believe that our students continue to practice their skills when they're not in class, most students wait until the night before class meets to engage with the material. And the student then attends class, but several days, if not a week, pass before the student engages with the material again. In contrast, internet-based courses can and should be constructed to require students to engage with the material every day. And that's what I do in my internet-based courses. They have five assignments each and every week, and they have to engage with the material each and every day. And they couldn't do all five assignments in one sitting. It would be like eating all of your daily food in one sitting or visiting every city you want to visit in Europe in one day. It's just not feasible. So in this way, internet-based education enables the students to distribute their learning over time, engage with the material in short, frequent episodes, and then master the material in increments rather than once or twice a week doses. So, um, so these short, frequent, distributed episodes that are asynchronous in time can lead to better mastery. But sometimes, even in my internet-based courses, we need some synchrony. And that's why I employ synchronous text-based chats. In each of my online courses, I require small groups of three or so students to meet synchronously online for an hour-long discussion once per week.